So often we meet with people, and Jesus meets with people, that point of their frustration with the life and the world they've got. Don't be afraid of that. They don't realise it's Jesus, remember that? That's really important. And there's this guy out there on the beach in the first light, they've been working all night. All night, hard, heavy, manual labour. It's been pointless, and they now feel really stupid because they're fishermen, and a fisherman without fish is what? Skin. Skin, yeah. <laughs> Skin, he's, he's also skinned, yeah, but he's kind of frustrated, you know. They don't come up in a good mood. <laughs> they don't come up in a good mood at all. And now all they've got in their mind is breakfast, right? Breakfast is what we want. And there's this guy out on the beach in the first light. What is he? What's he doing there? Some sort of beach bum? Oh, and he's a wise guy as well. He's a wise guy because he calls out to them from the beach. <coughs> you know, the NIV friends, haven't you any fish? No. No, 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 no. He's, he's using the word for children, paidia. <laughs> now, you could, you could use that in Greek for, you know, boys. If I go into the mouth, I don't say, good morning, gentlemen. Well, boys, what's happening? Right? Because it's a figure of speech, isn't it? It could be that. But <laughs> there's more to it than that. Because the word for fish that Jesus uses is the word for tiddlers. Have you got any little ones? <laughs> right? So Jesus, oh, honestly, it's bizarre when you actually get down to the root of this thing. Jesus is standing on the beach. Well, some bloke who slept out there all night and what? What is he? You know? And he's shouting to them, and they're, they're frustrated anyway. And he's like, go on, boys! Have you got any tiddlers in? <laughs> they aren't pleased. How about they're not pleased? Listen to their detailed and considered response to, response to his question. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they answered. Okay. Can't you hear the frustration? Can't you see their gritted teeth? No. One word. No tiddlers. Frustrated preachers because what's happened to all that? No frustrated followers because they can't find him to follow. Where is he? Popping up and disappearing. Frustrated now, even in the job they've done successfully, man and boy, until they went off to be preachers, and now they can't even do that either. And what's worse is that their confidence, even their trust for one another, after all that stuff with cocks crowing and the crucifixion, their trust even for one another lies smashed. At least they had their buddies, but now they're sort of looking at each other a bit odd. And right at the point where the frustration is most intense, some smart Alec on the beach is rubbing their noses in it. As it happens, it's because he's got better stuff in store for them, but they have no way of knowing that at the moment. So here comes the really extreme fishing bit. This is where the extreme fishing begins, because this is where Jesus steps in and things get extreme. Robson Green can't manage going around the world on the telly while doing his extreme fishing program. He can't cope doing that without a bunch of gillies. I call them gillies, but have you seen them? They're an amazing bunch of characters he drags out of the undergrowth who fish in that part of the world and tell him how to do it. Do you get that on iPlayer or something? Do you get that? I've seen bits of it. Seen bits of it. It's a good program, isn't it? It's a boy program, it really is. But these guys are going to listen to a preacher about fishing. The general assumption is that preachers know nothing, of course. Now, hopefully, the preacher knows someone, and in this case, Jesus, he's Jesus, and he is the someone. Okay. Here he goes. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. Disciples didn't realise it was him. Friends, where are your tiddlers? No, I don't think. Right, throw it in there on the right side of the boat, he says, and you'll find some verses. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the very large number of fish. The disciple of Jesus loved said to Peter, John, that is, it's the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he, no, listen, I don't get this bit. He wrapped his outer garment round him for taking it off and he jumped into the water. Sink. <laughs> What's going on? Why would you do that? I mean, you know about boats and things. Would you put on your heavy overcoat and your wellies and jump over? Um, the guy is just not thinking straight. He's just so desperate for Jesus. It's the Lord. Oh, man, I'm in the water. And he takes a header straight in to be closer to Jesus. The Jesus is let down. The Jesus is betrayed. has come back again. Come close to him. 
So Jesus has appeared at the point of extreme tiredness, extreme frustration, and so often he does.